Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing some junk journaling and I'm totally inspired by Junk Journal July, which is a creative journal challenge by Meg Journals. I'll pop Meg's channel below, but it's a month long challenge with different prompts. My freelance work is creating illustrated social graphics and so the lovely Meg asked me if I had any capacity to create the graphics for Junk Journal July and this was like a dream project for me because obviously I love illustration and design and I also love journaling so obviously I said yes. Here's the assets that I designed and here's the prompt list if you fancy following along. You don't have to create a new journal spread every day and you can interpret the prompts however you like. Meg's created it as a jumping off point and you can dip in and out however works for you. It's really flexible. So I really wanted to use some of these prompts for creating in my junk journal, but I decided I wanted to create a whole new journal to do it. My current journal is in a hobbycraft sketchbook and is a total mix of different styles. I've been super inspired by the vintage style of journaling and because I have so many bits of ephemera and vintage papers, I thought it was a really great way to use them and create my own journal. I wanted it to be reasonably small in size, so my journal is about 14 centimeters square. You'll notice throughout the video that I'm not very specific with my measuring and the whole process was really relaxed. I mostly ripped the papers with my ruler rather than cutting and it was a really simple, enjoyable process. I also didn't want the pages to be completely the same size, so I didn't use a template. I love seeing other people's journals where there's different sized pages and flaps and fold out elements and different bits like that, and the different sizes and lengths of the papers here really make it interesting and tactile. So I ended up with four signatures. I didn't even have a plan for how many, but I thought I'd just start playing with the papers and seeing where I ended up. Some of the papers were too small, so you'll see how I joined some of them together. And I also have some bits that are deliberately smaller, so on some of the signatures I have really small pieces in the middle. I either glued bits together, like magazine pages on top of vintage papers, gluing pages on top of postcards or envelopes and joining them together that way to make them big enough to fit in the journal. I didn't want it too small so I had enough space to work on on the pages. The whole journal turned out really quite interactive, which I really like. It's totally different to any other journals I have and I'm looking forward to decorating it. This video shows the base and then when I do some of the prompts I'll decorate the pages further. So I'll put on some of the smaller bits like stamps and other decorations like that. My current journal has blank pages so it's going to be totally new to me to use the pages that already have writing and illustrations on it. A lot of these supplies I've hoarded and kept for quite a few years. A lot of the pieces of paper are from books that I've bought from car boot sales and charity shops and taking pieces from there that I've collected over many years. And there's lots of black and white photographs, postcards, which again are from car boot sales and auctions, and lots of paper ephemera bits. I have a lot, so this was a really good way to use them. I'm also using more modern bits like clippings from magazines and bits like brown paper from a Primark bag or envelopes and bits like that. The patterned yellow oval paper is actually a wrapper from a bath bomb, so it's lots of throwaway bits as well as the lovely vintage pieces. The overall colour scheme is quite muted, but there's little pops of colour here and there. I decided not to do a specific front or back cover. I could have created a thicker or cardboard front and back, which would have made the journal more robust, but I like the way that it came out anyway, like really organic and simple. When it came to sewing it all together, one of the things I forgot to do was check the orientation of the signatures. So when I was putting together the pages and putting all the papers together, I had that way in my head, but when I sewed the whole book together, I forgot to check. So it still works well as the layout and orientation of the text and stuff didn't matter, but like I have the funny goat illustration from an old children's book and it's upside down, and there's a few pieces which I didn't expect to be that way up. Um, but other than that, I don't think it's obvious and nobody else would notice. I was totally winging it when I was binding them together as well. So I used thick cotton and a darning needle, and then I made a template on this scrap gridded paper to plan where to put my holes. I used binder clips to hold the pages together, there was a bit hit and miss, and some of the pages in the signature were a lot smaller, so obviously they weren't held by the clips. And also, the vintage papers are pretty delicate. 
So there was a black cat on a piece of paper which I had in the middle of one of the signatures which split into two pieces when I was sewing it up because it was so fragile so I'll have to stick that back in separately. It's really easy to tear the pages so if you're doing something similar then definitely be careful. But I just made four holes and went back and forth on each set. Once I had all four signatures I sewed them together from the outside using knots. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here, but it's not a tutorial and I was just playing and basically hoping for the best. I did these types of knots up each of the signatures at both ends and in the middle of each set of the holes. In the end it worked out really well and it seemed really secure. Um, it's obviously not going to be as strong as perfect binding or if I'd used more holes, but it's not going to be leaving my desk or my shelf and it should hold up really well when I'm creating in it, which is the main thing. It's also not neat at all, but I quite like the rustic look and it's very handmade. So here's the final journal. I'm really proud of it and pleased I got to use some of the papers from my stash. It's a really good way to use them up and get used rather than sitting in the box for another however many years. I'm always adding to my stash as well, so a good way to keep the stash more manageable. I can't wait to use the Junk Journal July prompts and get making in this so I'll probably create another video at the end of July so you can see what I've made in it. If you like this video please give me a thumbs up and thank you so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next week for another video. See you later!